Hello, this is Angela with Pergo's Permaculture. I'm in the backyard of my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden in zone 8B. You can hear the poultry are next to me enjoying their dinner. So there may be some happy duck and chicken and turkey noises in the background of this video. So today I wanna to talk about the question, is a food forest right for you? I have a quarter acre permaculture garden here and part of that uses food forest design. Now there's been a lot of hubbub the last few years on the internet and in books and um, you know magazine articles and particularly on YouTube, hyping up food forests. Food forests are not all there is to permaculture and not every permaculture system is right for a food forest. Not every person and not every landscape is right for including a food forest in their design. I think folks often conflate permaculture and food foresting as synonymous and they absolutely are not. You may live in a very arid location. You may live somewhere where it is naturally a, a grassland situation or perhaps, you know, like a high plateau and you're not gonna be successful with a food forest design. You may not want a food forest design. That doesn't mean you can't do permaculture and it doesn't mean you can't do sustainable garden design in general. I hope to cover this more in depth in future videos and I have touched on it in the past, but please evaluate whether your land is appropriate to even host a food forest. Look at the local ecosystem around you and see what it is communicating to you about the potential usage of your land. Once you've established that your land would best be utilized as a food forest rather than something like pasture for livestock, or perhaps a pond or some other design element within a permaculture system. Let's dive into these questions to decide, is a food forest right for you and your land together? So here's a couple of questions I think are really important when evaluating, is a food forest right for you? Number one, ask yourself, why do you want a food forest? This is Mr. Benzedrine, who is a hen and she makes the most terrifying noises. She is a copper moran and I've never had a chicken that makes noises like that before. Anyway, number one, ask yourself, why do you want a food forest? What is it about food forest design that appeals to you in the first place? Do you love the aesthetic of it? If that is as far as your interest goes, I would say a food forest is not right for you. It takes a lot of work to establish a food forest. There is a level of maintenance required once you have one, and it is not for everybody. So ask yourself, what is at the root of my longing to embrace food forest design to begin with? Number two, can you legally have a food forest design where you live? I have railed repeatedly against HOAs. Those are homeowners associations, which are rampant in much of the United States that really constrict and limit what you can plant and how you can design on your property. Maybe there are other covenants or um, rules and regulations about the land which you own that prohibit you being able to design a food forest how you want. So make sure that you are following the law and if you are going to choose to skirt it, be aware of the consequences you could incur if you do so. If you want a food forest design where you live and they're not legal, consider reaching out to your elected representatives to change those ordinances, to change those covenants, to have our leadership in our communities embrace more sustainable ways of living and have the laws reflect the freedom to embrace those more sustainable ways of living. Number three, are you prepared for what a food forest will bring to your property? Did you know forests are full of trees and trees have to be pruned and cared for? And also whatever you harvest from your trees, that requires labor to pick or cut back whatever it is you're gonna be harvesting out of your forest. But are you prepared for the other things that a forest brings? It brings increased shade and cooling to your home, to your structures. It will change the way water flows on your property. It will change the way wind moves across your property. It might be in a beneficial way. It might be in a deleterious way. And you need to think about whether you are okay bringing that on. Are you prepared for the increase in wildlife that will accompany the increase in habitat on your property? It may be wildlife you are really anxious to bring to your home, to your garden like more songbirds, like perhaps frogs, things like that. But it may also bring things you aren't really prepared for, like more spiders. 
walking through my garden in August and September, I have to carry a stick in front of me. It's my spider stick because I can't walk through the for food forest without walking through gobs of spider webs. That's a good thing. Those orb weavers are really good at controlling pests in my garden, but they are there because the food forest is there. Are you okay with perhaps attracting things like skunks and opossums and maybe rodents to your garden? Once you have a food forest, you create habitat for all kinds of wildlife and you need to think about whether that's something that you want around your home. Are you prepared for the social ramifications of a food forest? Particularly here in the US, unless you live in a, a few small enclaves, food forests are not gonna be the norm and not even be socially acceptable. I am very, very lucky that my neighbors accept the fact that I am their quirky eccentric neighbor. I also live in a part of the country where designing really lush, uh, abundant, wild looking gardens is considered more in vogue than in other places in the US. But where you live, you may be bucking the status quo. You may be, you know, a trend setter and you have to realize that you might get lots of praise and lots of interest in your design, but you may also get lots of um, criticism as well. And how are you going to deal with that? Are you prepared for the design element of a food forest? One thing I think folks tend to overlook is that a food forest is not simply an area where you plunk down a bunch of trees and it just becomes a woodland or a forest. I mean, it, it could be, but that's not really what a food forest is. In fact, I really prefer the term forest garden to food forest. A food forest is a cultivated space. You are intentionally choosing the trees. You're intentionally choosing the guild plants slash companion plants around them. You are designing intentionally. And that takes work, it takes skill, and it takes a budget in order to craft that space. And then it takes maintenance of that space. Are you prepared for all of that? It can seem really idyllic from things like my YouTube videos or magazine articles or Instagram pictures when you look at a food forest, but it is a garden and it takes the hand of a gardener in order to maintain it. It's not something you can just stroll out into every now and then and it will look pristine for you. It is not a cottage core fantasy. A food forest garden is actually a level of commitment and work. I find that work highly enjoyable. So for me, it doesn't feel like work most of the time. Two more things to consider before you decide if a food forest is right for you. How long are you gonna be on the property? And what are the long-term goals of your food forest? When you design a food forest, hi Turkey, there's a, hi Turkey. When you're establishing a food forest, let's say you've carefully designed it, you've carefully chosen and planted your plants. Most of those trees are gonna outlive you. They may take a long time to reach maturity in the first place, and you may spend a significant portion of time with an immature food forest. But once they mature, you're creating a system that you hope is permanent. What is that going to look like for you? What is it going to look like for your descendants, for future owners of your property? What are you gifting not only yourself, but what are you gifting future owners of your property and your greater community when you are planting your food forest? The last element to think about when you are considering whether a food forest is right for you. What will you do with the yields of your food forest? If you're creating a highly productive and resilient system, you may find you have a lot more food and fiber and medicine and wood coming out of your property than you know what to do with. What are you gonna do with the excess? You're gonna follow the permaculture principle of share the surplus. What will that look like? What are you gonna do in terms of harvesting the food out of your food forest? Are you prepared for that time commitment, for that, um, time that you're going to spend not only harvesting but also processing the harvest or finding volunteers like Portland Fruit Tree Project to come and harvest it for you and take it to folks in need. What's your plan? What's your plan for utilization of the yield of your food forest? Right now, in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years, what is that going to look like? So I hope those questions are helpful for you. I hope that you take some time if you're considering a food forest to think about what you're really getting into, whether it's the right design for you, as beautiful and lush as it is, as idyllic as it can feel from looking at other people's examples. We want to critically evaluate whether a design is right for us, for our land, for our life, for our community. We want to set ourselves up for success. I cannot say that enough on this channel. I want you to enjoy your gardening. I want you, enjoy, I want you to enjoy your garden as much as I enjoy my garden. 
I want you to feel successful and be successful in your garden. And so it's really important to evaluate whether a design is the right one for your yard. There are many other permaculture design strategies you can utilize without doing a food forest slash forest garden design. Or maybe that is the absolutely right, best design for you. Take the time, think about those questions, brainstorm a little bit before you launch in. It's okay to take the time and do slow, small solutions. It's okay, even though it can feel really urgent and we wanna be anxious and get going, it's okay to slow down and process a little bit and think before we jump in. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a Patreon down below and a PayPal and a Venmo if you're interested in supporting the work of this channel. I'll be back really soon for my permaculture garden here in Portland, Oregon. Thanks.